Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to DesignCast. It's a podcast where I interview a wide range of guests and ask the question, how do you design education? Why is this important? Students all learn differently and need varied teaching methods to be successful. It is more important now than ever to accommodate and personalize education for all students as much as possible. I use my 25 years of experience as an educator to ask questions and to learn about the exciting things people are doing to provide for all students and their unique perspectives. Each episode, I chat with guests from all over the world, from classroom teachers, authors, consultants, and beyond. We chat around a range of topics that we feel are important right now. Will you join me in this journey to learn and grow together? If it's your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to check it out. If you like this podcast, please leave a review, rate, subscribe, share, and download from your preferred podcasting app. This helps the podcast get discovered by new listeners. Also, please use the hashtag DesignCast when discussing your thoughts and feedback on your favorite social media platform to connect with me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. So let's get on with the episode. Welcome back to another episode of Design Cast. I am just so completely excited and fortunate to have Jill Dubois with me today. Hi, Jill. How are you? Hi, Jason. I am awesome. Woke up <laughs> with a smile on my face. The sun is shining. And yeah, life is good. That is awesome. Yeah, I, the sun was not quite up when I got up this morning, but that's just because I live way, <laughs> way north. But yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Jill. If people are not familiar with who you are, Jill, can you just give me sort of the quick minute or two, you know, elevator pitch of who you are and what you do? Sure. Okay. So I actually live in Clearwater, Florida, and I married... 30 plus years, I have one son, one dog, former classroom educator. I was in the elementary education world for 21 plus years and recently took a step out and thought, you know what, it's my time to move on and do something different in education. So now I work as a professional learning guide for a company in Ohio, and I'm actually helping creating content and facilitate professional development for educators. So, oh, I have, I have author and illustrator too sorry i was about to say you're leaving out the <laughs> most that. important stuff you know it's so <laughs> funny because when you do create things right when you're a content creator or, or a, an author or an illustrator it's so much part of who you are you sometimes even forget to tell people right like i mean it's it's just part of who you are i, yeah. I feel the same way it's kind of yeah. crazy it's almost like oh it's an afterthought of like oh yeah i do oh, i have written way. books and you know do some blogging have a podcast but right. you know so how did you get into authoring and illustrating well that was something that i've always loved writing um english language arts is always my passion it was with my students i always loved teaching writing even to my second graders and i remember i would always teach them little mini lessons you know when you got second graders and third graders it just it's tough to get them to understand, you know, how to pull things out and how to, you know, they're like, I don't, can't think of anything. I'm stuck. So I would always teach them, you know what, just heart dump. Whatever is important to you, put it down. It doesn't matter if it's complete sentence, if it's one word, if it's a thought, if it's a phrase, just write it down. And I just always did that myself. So you know, when kind of technology kind of beefed up a little bit, we had Google Drive all of a sudden <laughs> come into our lives. It's like, hey, I've got this right here. It's seamless. I can just start dumping everything into a Google Drive, into a Google Doc. So that's what I did. And I remember after COVID, you know, that was really when everything just kind of, you know, was on pause and we had nothing to do. I mean, you can't leave your house. You can't <laughs> go to the store. You know, everything was online and even, you know, students. And I started repeating that with my students and again, trying to get them to write. And I thought, you know what? I need to practice what I'm preaching. I had some things in my heart that I knew were messages that had been brewing for quite some time and I wanted to get them out. So I actually had that time to sit down and process my thoughts and process my words. And it just started flowing. And once I got a story down, I remember going, maybe I should publish it. Maybe I should put it out there. So that's how I got started. So did that come first or the podcast come first or the website, the blogging, you know what? <laughs> sort of, it sounds like there's a lot going on. I mean, where, 
Did it all happen at once? I mean, what, what was sort of the progression? <laughs> oh, my goodness, it did. So it was actually the Google Doc, and it was me putting everything in and just heart dumping. And from there, I remember thinking, all right, well, I've got something here. Let me reach out to a few publishers. So I actually did and got seven rejections. And I remember thinking, all right, well, maybe this isn't meant to be. I thought, well, I'll try one more time. And I did. I reached out and one more said, you know what? It's a great story. I love it. Can we can we put it out? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, well, do you have an illustrator? This isn't going to be a children's book. Do you have, I'm like, uh, no, but I can find one. So I quickly asked my aunt who taught me everything that I knew about art. I am an artist by nature, but never really did anything, you know, outside of it being a hobby. So I asked my aunt Casey and I said, Casey, I said, listen, I've got this book written down. I'm going to send you the draft. Let's, can we come together and really brainstorm, you know, how can we get this story to come to life with your, with your illustrations? And I remember her reading the story and she kind of sketched out a few little things for the character. And she, I said, well, you know, what do you think? And she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm like, Casey, I'm like, you are an artist. You can bring <laughs> this to life. We can do this together. We've always dreamed of doing something together. And she's like, no. I said, why? She goes, because you can do it. I believe in you. You can do it. You've got the talent. You've got the capabilities. And I'm like, oh, great. Great. No. I mean, I wrote the story for goodness sake. So I, you know, I thought, well, all right, if she believes in me, I'll do it. So I just sat down, I bought an app and put it on my iPad and an Apple pencil and I took Procreate and I just, <laughs> nice. I ran with it. I played yeah. with it. I thought, all right, well, this is pretty amazing. I mean, I was used to watercolors. I mean, that was my medium. And, you know, but having an art studio in your lap with millions of different combinations of colors and options and brushes and strokes. And it was, I fell in love. So got that first book out. First book was, was completed and it was published and it was just a dream come true. It was a story based on the life of my sister, who I lost at 40 to cancer. And it was, she had left behind two children, seven and nine. And my niece, Kaylee, I especially, my heart just, you know, I'm like, I'm her aunt. How can I relay how special her mother was? She was so young. She didn't remember, but I want to leave that legacy for her and her brother. So it was all a book about Liv and Liv went to the beach. She loved the seashore. She loved collecting seashells, but she didn't collect the perfect ones and the ones that were beautiful to bring home. She picked up the broken ones and she picked up the ones that everybody had discarded and dropped and were chipped and broken and lost their color. And it just kind of like paralleled the life of my sister, who was truly an inclusive and empathetic human being in all of her soul, would take those people who were friendless and who had some problems and were broken and just lifted them up to make them feel special and wanted and worthy. So that was, you know, the, the beginning. And then, you know, it's just like everything just kind of progresses. And then you've got more stories to tell. And then you, then I created a publishing imprint because I'm like, this is so easy. I taught myself on YouTube. I'm like, why am I paying somebody to do this? Exactly. I can do it myself. <laughs> so created a publishing imprint, Imparted Joy LLC. And I thought, you know, I'm going to impart that joy to other people and help them tell their stories. So not only have I put out, you know, my four books, but I've also helped so far three or four other authors tell their stories as well and publish their books. And, you know, and it's not, it's always been been such a really cool thing because I don't do it just to have clients and get their books published. And, you know, I do it for the relationship. I do it for how can we come together and join together and create this community and this bond. I want to share your story, but I know that your story is important to you. So how can I make it come to life? And the true true blessings that have come from sharing other people's stories have just totally blown my mind. And I know I'm on the right track. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a side hustle. Yes, but it's a heart hustle. That's what makes it so special. So from there, yeah, came the blog, got involved with Teach Better. So, and then somebody reached out and said, you know, you have this little tiny podcast and it's not a, I don't interview people. I don't, it's me just, it's, I call it moments of imparted joy. And it's just kind of in 
infusing three or four minutes of something that's positive out into the universe. And I'm not a Pollyanna. I'm not, you know, sugarcoating anything. I'm just, <laughs> you know, it's just joy. It's not happiness. Happiness is so like fleeting and external, but joy is that internal satisfaction and of hope and peace that has to be cultivated. So the more I can cultivate that and impart that and infuse that and still in others, that's kind of my passion. Well, I can. Oh, really that was a long it. answer. <laughs> no, that was an excellent answer. Thank you so much. I mean, I was just thinking that you you kept saying to your students to have a, a heart dump. Isn't that what you called it? A heart dump. And then yeah. you did the same thing. And so I think I know that no matter what people teach, students seeing teachers live the things that they say is the best way to teach is for them to see those yeah. things. And so for you to be able, and what a wonderful, beautiful gift that you've given your niece and nephew to this book about their mom and that kind of, well, it's very lovely. Thank you for sharing that with me. I, I was very oh. uh, touching. And yeah, you're really living exactly what you told your students to do, which is great. I think that's yeah. going to be awesome for, for them to see for, for years to come because students are, no matter how old or young they are, they're not easily fooled and they can walk into mm-hmm. a classroom and they can see if someone's authentic or not and if they yeah. do what they say that they do, right? And so I think that they probably very easily see <laughs> that you're the, the real McCoy when it comes to, <laughs> <laughs> to all of that. Thank you for sharing that with me. And, and I, I just, it's really yeah. lovely to meet other creators and and to, to find your passions and, and that kind of thing. Wow, I just love it. So tell me about the work you're doing now, Jill, the kinds of things that you do with your, you said you work with a company in Ohio, and then you, I assume yep. part of this publishing, this book imprint that you mentioned is also part of your repertoire of, of toolkit. <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah, what are you doing so, now? Yeah, what, like per- what kinds of things do you do? <laughs> so professionally, yes, I work for a company called Forward Edge and Edge U is the branch of Forward Edge. Forward Edge works in Cincinnati and they actually Ohio and they completely go in and only work in education. So they're they do break fix, they're a technology solution provider. Oh, so okay. they go okay. in and do all managed services. Nice. But we have another arm that comes out yeah. that is a micro credentialing program. So oh. that micro credentialing program of badges is what mm. we, you know, share with schools and other educators and districts. So it's not even it doesn't even have to be a district. It can be anybody. Anybody can can join. And we have these badges that were created by teachers, by educators, by people like me who are are like, you know, we've used these tech tools and we know that they are valuable. We know that teachers need somebody to relate to them on an even level where we can share. Here's what we've learned. Here's what we want to share with you. And here's what you can take and impact students in your classroom and engage them in technology. They're all tech. Most of them are, we have like 260 of them and they're all wow. tech related, but some of them are, you know, social emotional learning. Like some mm. of them are Google tools. It could be something very simple from something that's going to take half an hour to something that's going to take 12 hours. So it just kind of depends, but creating that content and allowing teachers and educators to have voice and choice in their professional development. My school, and the whole reason I even got into that was our school adopted that program four years ago when I was still in the classroom. And I remember thinking, this is the best thing in the world. (laughs) And I took it and ran with it. I was like, give me more. I earned all these badges. And, and, you know, you earn points for your recertification and every, you know, any state that you're in. And I remember thinking that's what I needed. I needed something that I can take for myself, but also share with my students. And I will never forget, I was just slow to kind of grasp onto some of these things, like, you know, Book Creator or Flip or, you know, the Google tools. And But my students, you give a seven or an eight-year-old a little an inch and they will take it and they have these brilliant ideas and the ideas that we had collaborating in the classroom with book creator and with flip and doing videos and it was just a wonderful wonderful experience to be able to share that with them so i knew when i left the classroom and like i that's where the direction i want to head i want to help other educators understand that there's so much out there and you don't have to learn everything learn the things that you want to learn that you know you can take and implement with them so yeah so that's what happened okay that's where i am professionally so yes creating content and i actually teachers will 
send in evidence and send submissions in of things that they've learned. Okay. And then I'm part of the review team. Okay. Um, and I guide, kind of guide them. So when they send something in, I review it. If it's kind of missing the mark, I'll kind of help coach them through, okay, you're on the right track. And here is something else that you could do to kind of help extend that and make that just a little bit, you know, fit a little bit better for your students. So I'll help coach them through that or I'll be like, boom, this is spot on. Oh my goodness. Can we use this as an example on our website? You know, so it's, it's so much fun to see educators from all over the world sending in their brilliant ideas and the ways that they're using things with students. So, so much fun. So that's professional. I, I get so excited because it's uh, really it's a right. great I'm, job. I'm the same way. So this is awesome. Oh. Lots of energy. So, and then personally, yes, I am. I, when I started in Part of Joy, I just was going to use it just as a vehicle just to promote, you know, put out my books. And then I started, you know, helping other authors. And But I am mostly now. Now, authors are coming to me and saying, you know, I see your heart. I see the way that you illustrate fits, you know, what I would love to see for my children's book. So so I'm currently uh, just doing some illustrating work right now, wow. so, which is really hard, Jason. It's really hard. I know. Because, <laughs> you know, you're you're taking somebody else's story and somebody else's heart and yes. trying to make it come to life. Visualize it. Yeah, and absolutely. Visualizing yep. it. My yeah, I can do, you know, and I yeah. can tweak it and fix it and do this yeah. and that, but somebody else's. So it takes so much back and forth. And that's where that building those relationships come from. And it's just a beautiful experience. So I'm continuing. I think I've got two more contracts I've not even started yet. So that'll take me through probably 2023. I don't rush, you know, it takes a but lot yeah. of time, but we work, we work back and forth remotely on Google Slides and just put ideas back and forth in there. And then most the most recent project I have are a deck of cards and they're called Finding Joy, Grow, Cultivate, Grow, and Thrive. And that came from my journal. I have, I'm a journal addict and I have at least 10 around my house. And whenever I have something on my mind, I pick it up, write in it. And it just came to be one day, I'm like, gosh, I've got all these things spread out. I'd love to put them together and maybe a different kind of book. And I remember putting them together going, these are all, you know, things about joy. It doesn't really make sense to put it in a book, but, and I had just seen somebody else that had like Instagram ad or something and it was yeah it was like little sweary cards i don't know if you know they were like things that had swear words on them and i'm like oh, those are fun like i could do that oh man i could do that but i could do it <laughs> i know <laughs> i am not gonna oh, put swear funny. words on them but so every card there are 42 cards and i thought i took every one of my quotes about joy and i put them on a card and i designed just a quick little sketch. They're mostly flowers because I love flowers and there's a few that are birds, but every one of them came from a place that, you know, wasn't always a happy place. You know, journaling is your your storms and your stories. You know, what have I gone through that I maybe could help somebody else? So every one of them, like this one is, says overthrow doubt, triumph over tension because conquering fear is a cultivation of new joy. So, you know, it's simple. But I've had people who have gotten them and they say, you know, I didn't know what to do with these, but I take one and I, I just sit it by my computer and that's my meditation oh, for the wow. day. Or, or you know, I'm going to make that a journal post. I'm going to, you know, really kind of reflect and kind of break that apart for myself. And that was the intention behind it. More of those may come. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have any other plans. But, you know, I just, I, that's what it is the beauty of being a creator. Mm. You just... Right. You know, when it comes, it comes and you know when That's it's right. right. I totally get it. I mean, I think that I think you and I were talking kind of before this about sometimes the reluctance of people to talk on camera or to hear their own voice or to to create things, to put things out there because of fear of what other people will think or fear of, yeah. you know, actually putting something out there to be part of this universe of stuff that we make, right, and create. And I think yeah. it's wonderful that you're finding all these different outlets and the card idea is awesome. Uh, I, I've seen those Instagram ones <laughs> that you're talking about. <laughs> uh, that's where you need to probably add, put yours on an ad, but, I but uh, right. right right behind the square word one. But, you know, it's awesome to see that you're doing that. And I didn't even realize the micro-credentialing part when we were kind of leading up to this. And that's actually a real passion of mine for students because 
it's so exciting for them because of this gamification and this building of their skills. They can pick and choose what they find is important and, and work through that. So I hope maybe you and I can have a later conversation <laughs> about how that how that might work for workplace skills or for different things for students, a little bit older students. I'm, yeah. I'm really passionate about creating these personalized pathways that use micro-credentialing and badging to do yeah. that. So it's really interesting that I didn't even put the two and two to together on that one. So hopefully oh, you and I can, <laughs> can connect on that a little bit later. Yeah. So that's awesome, man. I, I, I tell you, I'm so jealous with your Procreate tools uh, and skills. Uh, I wish I had more time to... <laughs> play around with that because it's, it's really pretty sweet. I love the stuff. And actually, a lot of my students do use it for lots of different things that we do. But I do, again, work with older students. But yeah. it's really cool that it's here to stay. Like, you know, an Apple Pencil and an iPad and Procreate are not going away. Yeah. Uh, they're only going to continue to improve. And so I think that's that's pretty sweet. So, yeah. Jill, thank you so much for sharing sharing those things with me. I am, yeah. I'm just totally, I just feel so warm <laughs> and, ch- and, and, oh, and joyous so by talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those stories. Awesome. And so I sure. know that um, you've already told me, is there anything else you're really excited about? <laughs> I, I know like, okay, so, you know, disclosure to everyone who's listening. Yeah. I did get a few questions, you know, <laughs> that, Hey, here's our guiding question. Right. And that was one of your, your yeah. questions. And I'm like, what am I not excited about? <laughs> shorter list. You know, I think it's a shorter short list. list, you know? And I just, I don't know. Yeah. I think that, you know, I don't ever like to do something halfway. I think, you know, I have learned that, you know, this art and creation and writing has been a form of therapy, you know, because I have been through some really hard times. And like we all have, we've all been through those storms of life and where we don't know if we're going to, you know, come out on the other side. And I've just learned that to find to focus on that one little positive thing that you can pull out from that storm and knowing that that storm, you know, is going to, to stop or it is the waves are going to calm down a little bit eventually, you know, even if that's the positive to take away from it. And then just find something else to focus on. Find another way to interact with your thoughts and with your soul. And that is, that's just kind of become something I've learned to be still. I've always been a person who has just been go, 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 go. And when I was in the classroom, it was like that. It was like, I can't ever be off. You know, my students need me. And then I go home and I'm like, I got to cook dinner and I got to exercise and I've got to, you know, grade papers. And and I remember when I came home, when I, you know, left the classroom to come home and I'm like, I found myself working from home home and I'm like, I'm still, I'm like, I don't have to run at a hundred miles an hour. I can slow my pace. I can start, you know, thinking about things that, okay, what is something I want to work on for me? And, you know, I had spent so many years doing things for other people and overthinking and trying to be that perfectionist. I grew up a perfectionist. I grew up trying to be a pleaser, trying to please my parents, trying to be that perfect child. And just realizing that, you know, overcoming that fear and doubt. And it goes back to this card, right? Triumphing over tension and conquering those fears have just led me to a place where I'm just, I'm so like, I don't know, I'm so optimistic right now. And I don't have to be running 100 miles an hour to be worthy and to be valued. What I do is enough. And I love I, it. I just, it's, it's hard to have that mentality. And it's, you know, yeah, there's still mm. storms, but you yeah, know, you just look at them a little bit differently. That segues perfectly into the question I've been asking everyone all season. And that is, if you could go back in time and speak to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? Okay. Be a quitter. Okay. Just quit. Just quit. What are we going to quit, Jill? Yep. And when I say that, if I had quit the constant overthinking, if I had quit the comparison, comparing myself with other people, if I had quit being a perfectionist, and if I had just lived, you know, my life just free without those burdens, life would have been so much better. But I'm not. I'm not going to go back, you know, and go, oh, I should have, could have, would have, you know, but if I could have told myself back then, just be a quitter. Quit that. Stop that. Move forward. Nobody is expecting you to hold yourself at that expectation that you're expecting to hold yourself to. 
Yep, be a quitter. Wow, be a quitter. I've heard a lot of things this season. That's not one I've heard. So I appreciate (laughs) that. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Jill, I want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so, so much for being able to connect with me today. And I I really would love to follow up with you at some point in the next year or two, just to see kind of how things are going and how things have developed. But this hopefully even meet you one day in person. I want to meet all my guests in person at some point when I can get out of where I'm at. But, and, and maybe next time we can talk about your connection to China, like my connection to China. Yeah. But this time I think um, I, I'm going to have to wrap it up, but thank you so much for the time that you've given to me. It's been a real joy. I, I do appreciate it. And I'll make sure oh. that all of your contact information is included in the show notes. But if someone wants to, is listening and they really want to just get in touch with you quickly, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. Best way to do that would be on Twitter at okay. Jill Dubois 22 and my website. So okay. simple, pretty simple. And I'm an open book. You ask, you can ask me anything and listen, I'll tell you. <laughs> I can you. tell. <laughs> I can already tell. <laughs> oh, wow. But and thank 20, you. Thank you. There were 21 for... others before you on Twitter <laughs> with the same name or? <laughs> uh, you know, no. You know what? That's what they assigned me. That's what they Is that not strange? Back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. I'm like, okay, funny? well, I like even numbers. 22. Okay. That was your football like number, number, right? So there you go. So, yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. Jill, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. Um, I, I know that people will find joy in what we've talked about today. So I do appreciate everything that you share with me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of DesignCast. Again, I'm Jason. I am the creator and host and one man band when it comes to this podcast. I sincerely hope you enjoyed it, and please share it with your colleagues and friends and help me network with those folks who you think will benefit from listening to this podcast. If you own a company or you have connections where you would like to partner with me in this podcast, whether it be sponsorship or product reviews or any other possible services, please reach out to me. My contact information is in the show notes and I cannot wait to hear from you. I only do this because I love talking to people and I love sharing my passion with all the listeners. So if you are interested in possibly being a future guest, please reach out and get in touch. I can't wait to hear from you. I really want to hear about how this podcast and its guests are helping you become better or to enrich your lives. Thank you so much for listening and until next time, be good to one another. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. We'll see you on the next episode.